We've all seen the damned United, haven't we? And if you haven't, pause this video and come back to me in two hours. Seen it? Good, let's crack on. Brian Clough's bravado backed up with a tactical nous of assistant Peter Taylor rolled into Leeds in the summer of 1974. He told the stars of Leeds that had stood atop English football for the better part of a decade under predecessor Don Revy that they hadn't won anything properly. Billy Bremner, Johnny Giles, Norman Hunter, Peter Lorimer, Eddie Gray. Players who had formed the bedrock of Leeds United's successes for the previous decades under Revy and players that would all feature in the European Cup final at the end of that season were thoroughly alienated. 44 days later Brian Clough was gone. Sacked by the club directors and a year later he'd go to Nottingham Forest where he remained up until his retirement in 1993. In that 18 year period Clough won a title, two European Cups and four League Cups whilst Leeds won a solitary league title in 1992 while cycling through managers such as Jimmy Armfield, Jock Steen, Jimmy Adamson, Howard Wilkinson as well as former players Alan Clark, Eddie Gray and Billy Bremner in a period that included an eight year stay in Division 2. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if Brian Clough stayed at Leeds. At the culmination of the 1974-75 season, which saw Leeds fall to 6th place in the league, as well as the departures of Revy Stalwarts, Giles, Bremner, Hunter, Lorimer and Gray, whilst Clough's purchases of John Robertson and John O'Hare, who followed him from Derby, saw a regeneration of the team. With the losses of such big names to Leeds' identity, a lot of fans and some of the directors were irked at such a decision, and Clough equalled his best and only showing in the European Cup where Leeds surrendered a 2-1 win at Elland Road to Barcelona in the semi-finals before being thrashed 3-0 in Spain. The revolution continued well into the following season as goalkeeper David Stewart was replaced with Peter Shilton. Trevor Cherry, Gordon McQueen and Paul Maidley formed a defensive line, added to the purchase of Newcastle's Frank Clark. Archie Gemmell followed Clough to Elland Road in the same summer, reuniting with McGovern in midfield as well as Terry Yoriff whilst John O'Hare, Alan Clark and Joe Jordan formed a formidable offensive line. The biggest signing for Clough that summer however was reuniting with Peter Taylor as his assistant manager. They had seven years left on their ticking time bomb of a relationship when Taylor ultimately told Clough he would be retiring only to poach John Robertson from him for his new Derby County team. But within those seven years Leeds received glory as yet unprecedented to an English club globally. They topped the first division ahead of Liverpool, granting them a quick return to the European Cup. Clough wouldn't follow up his second league title for a long time, much to the shock of the Leeds board. However, success elsewhere kept Clough's name in a good light. The failures of the semi-final defeat in 1975 in Europe became champions of Europe in 1977. Borussia Mönchengladbach were the victims that year and club Bruges the next year, as Leeds completed a feat that no other club could match in England, multiple winners of the European Cup. Joe Jordan scored a double in the final to rubber stamp his legacy in West Yorkshire. The following year Jordan, Clough and Taylor brought home the third European Cup to Elland Road, completing feats that had only been achieved by the royalty of Real Madrid, Ajax and Bayern Munich. Archie Gemmell got the only goal in a 1-0 win over Malmo, Leeds third European Cup in as many years where they beat Liverpool in the first round and won the FA Cup. However the treble chasing Leeds United were thwarted by Liverpool in the league on the penultimate weekend. The true immortality of a treble winning season would be out of Clough's reach. Three trophyless years as well as a shocking elimination from the first round of the 1979-80 European Cup to CSKA Sevilla saw Clough's last bow in the European Cup at Lund Road. Following the split with Taylor in the summer of 1982, Clough lasted just a further 12 months finishing 11th with poor signings, worst of which was Jesper Olsen, counted towards his bad blood with the board. Olsen was sold to Manchester United and Clough left within days. A year at Nottingham Forest ended with 6th place in the 2nd division, a point and a place behind Grimsby Town. Clough had returned to his homeland in the North East, and whilst the Hazel disaster would stop Newcastle United and Brian Clough from entering the European Cup for the foreseeable, their performances in the league wouldn't warrant inclusion anyway. Their form was albeit impressive, never falling out of the top half in his 8 year tenure on Tyneside before retirement. John Robertson reunited with Clough after Peter Taylor left Derby County, whilst Clough brought in the likes of Peter Shilton and Stuart Pearce from Forest and Coventry respectively for a 5th place finish. They improved further the following season winning the League Cup and finishing 2nd with both Clive Allen top scorer with 29 and Des Walker coming in, as well as Paul Gascoigne being promoted to the first team. 
Gaza proved a revelation, and with Terry Butcher and Viv Anderson replacing the aging Glenn Roder and Malcolm Brown in defence, Newcastle retained their top three status in 1986 and 1987, before the loss of Peter Beardsley to Liverpool for a staggering £2 million, and the Toon were left adrift in seventh. Clough's resilience shone through, however, and with the outlay of £3.7 million to bring Tony Cotty and Dean Saunders in, Newcastle climbed up to third in 1989, losing in the FA Cup final to Everton, and then finally ending their league title drought in 1990. Luckily for Clough, the Hazel ban ended in time for the 1990-91 season. It will be Paul Gascoigne's last season, following on from his performances in the World Cup and in the European Cup, which tempted Lazio to splash the cash on the midfielder. Gaza starred in the two-legged wins of a recent finalist by Munich and Porto, but a Tony Cotti double in Yugoslavia wouldn't stop Red Star Belgrade and Dejan Savicevic, who won 4-3 on aggregate in the semi-finals. They would eventually run out winners, against Marseille on penalties. Without Gascoigne and whilst Dean Saunders couldn't replicate Peter Beardsley's form, Clough's career fizzled out with a 14th place finish. Kevin Keegan replaced him. As fate, Kevin Keegan would leave in 1997, unable to emulate Brian Clough's league title for Newcastle. Winners, Leeds United. They won three European Cups, only matched in England by Liverpool and Manchester United, who both have three titles too. And Newcastle also winners, because they ended their long, long wait for a league title in England. Two losers today, Liverpool and Nottingham Forest, because they both lost big European glories in the 1970s and 80s owing to Clough and Leeds' success. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like on this video and subscribe, as it really helps our channel grow. In 2021 we will be expanding our what if scenarios to 4 days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. We will be uploading all of our what if football goodness such as video game reviews and the Naughty's Nostalgia podcast on Wednesdays, Throwback Thursdays, Fantasy Five side on Fridays and the biography of football on Saturdays. Tier Tuesday has evolved into Ranked, Tuesday's series which ranks the best and the worst of all football. If you have any suggestions for a what if scenario or any other content, please leave it in the comments section or tweet us at whatif underscore YouTube. See you tomorrow.